Everybody, it's me, Ross, and welcome back to another edition of Meet the Opposition. Today, I'm joined by Sam Stone, the man from the PO4 podcast, and also does a bit of writing for Pompey's News. Now, ahead of the Blues' trip to Fratton Park as they take on Pompey. Sam, it's the battle of the big dogs in League One. I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, let's go and get your assessment of the season so far with Pompey. We had a 4-0 win against Sunderland, but on the weekend, a 4-1 defeat against Rotherham. What happened? And welcome to the show. Uh, afternoon, mate. Thanks for having me on. Uh, yeah, well, what did happen at the weekend? Um, me and my dad were in the stands at Rotherham and three goals in five minutes and that was it. It was a pretty bleak journey home. Uh, but yeah, Pompey season so far it is exactly, in my opinion, what we all knew was going to happen. This summer was a big summer of change, new management, reduced budget slightly, new playing staff, completely new way of playing compared to how we were playing under Kenny Jacket. And it is exactly what we expected. It's a season of transition, currently 12th in the league, bang in the middle of the league. We've had four wins, five losses, three draws. It's pretty much what we all expected. But being football fans, there's obviously that kind of expectation, especially being Pompey fans. There's an expectation on the club to do better than we are doing. But it's, this league this year is extremely, extremely tough. You've got your lights of Ipswich, you've got Rotherham, who on Saturday were, were the best team I've seen this, league, this year. They didn't even get out of second gear and they beat us 4-1. You know, Sheffield Wednesday, another big club. So I think there needs to be a bit of realism this year from Pompey fans, especially that it is going to be a season of transition. And, you know, these clubs that we've just I've talked about, I mentioned Rotherham, they've been together a long, long time and that's why they're successful. So it would be the same for Pompey. If, if we can get something going this season towards the end of the season and put us in a good position for next year, and two more transfer windows. It will look, st it will start to look better. But right now, it is pretty hard going. I can't lie to be a Bombay fan, but yeah, it's up and down. We've had a few good results, and and like we just got to try and replicate what we did against Sunderland because that that was really quite something on that uh, very wet Fratton Park pitch. Definitely, and um, you know, of course, the Blues travel to Fratton Park, and it's um it's becoming into a little bit of a rivalry because of what happened during the summer. Of course, Paul Cook in our dugout, formerly of a Pompey, and, you know, you're successful, you guys. Um, what's your thoughts on town and what's your thoughts on Paul Cook in general? Obviously, my bit switch, you know, you're a, you're a massive club and, and I, I couldn't quite understand why you hung on to Paul Lambert as long as he did. Um, you know, to, the last season was especially disappointing and, and the squad you assembled, even when Cook came in, it didn't really change much. My thoughts on Paul Cook, probably a bit controversial from Pompey fans, but I absolutely love the bloke when he was at, um, when he was at Portsmouth and he got hounded at certain times with the point he thought he was going to actually walk out. Um, but then towards the end of the season, we went on like a 12-game winning run. Some played some of the best football we've we've ever seen from a Portsmouth side. We had players like Ender Stevens, We had players like Matt Clark and Jamal Lowe, who are now all playing, playing much higher up. And and, and that, that team played some of the best football we've seen in a long time. And Paul Cook was kind of infectious at that time. He was with Liam Richardson, which I feel like maybe slightly could be a reason why he's not doing as well now. If you look at Wigan with Liam Richardson, they're doing very well. But, but yeah, the, he was just, at that time, it was very, he, he kind of got Pompey, he was what Pompey fans wanted. The sour bit is that when he left, he, he did say, he was like, I'm never going to leave this club. It, you know, I can take this club forward. And, you know, two days later, he's off to Wigan with a, with a big old paycheck in his pocket. But after you look through it, you could kind of see why he went. We were going for an ownership change and Wigan was a lot closer to his home. They gave him a good budget and he went on to win the league with Wigan. So I do think he's a very good manager. Um, he, he does come out of the same stuff in interviews quite a bit, which is slightly frustrating, but you can tell he cares. And, and compared to, we went from having Paul Cook to having Kenny Jacket, who's very kind of emotionless, if you like. There was no emotion and that's what Pompey fans wanted. And that was ultimately why Kenny Jacket didn't get the amount of the patience kind of went with Kenny Jacket. Um, well, now we've got Danny Cowley. It's very different. I think fans really like him. Even though results aren't going our way, you can see he cares a lot and you can see what he's trying to do. Um, but yeah, Danny Cowley and Paul Cook, I think, are very similar characters um, in the dugout. Yeah. And let's talk about um, Pompey's team then. You know, as you said, it's a season of transition. Um, let's talk about the, the starting eleven. you know, a four-one defeat. You'd think a manager would change things, but sometimes it's not. That's not the answer. But what's the the key players we should look out for, and and fans should be watching um, for this game? Well, yeah, you mentioned obviously it's a four-one defeat. You'd think you'd change it up, but for fifty minutes against Rotherham, we actually were the better team. We first half we created a lot of chances. Harness 
was kind of dictating it. We got back into the game in like the first five minutes of the second half and we and we all looked at each other and went, we could get something here. A point would have been great, so we actually thought we could go on and get another one. Um, but yeah, that was just a, a funny five minutes. And I don't think that will legislate for wholesale changes because we haven't actually got a lot of depth on the bench as it is because we've we very short changed in that sense. So it will be a very similar team. Curtis will come back in for, for likely uh, Williams and then it will push He'll play up front with um with John Marquis with Harness just in behind them, kind of dictating things because that's where he's been at his best. Previously, he's been played out right, wide right, but now he's been pushed into the middle and he always scores goals when he's in the middle. He scored two and two now, and I would fancy him. He'd be my choice for a goal scorer on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, we, we will likely play three at the back with um, Lee Brown and Romeo as wing backs with Joe Morrell and Tony Cliff in the middle. Um, we've been slightly hindered with defensive injuries. We've had we signed Connor Ogilvy from Gingham who looks to be a good defensive signing. He's quite solid, although on Saturday he did get overrun a little bit by Michael Smith at the top of Rotherham. Um, but he's one of the better strikers in the league. And But we've also had Clark Robertson, who we signed from Rotherham, who looks in the first three games to be a very, very good defender, extremely comfortable on the ball, solid, but he's been injured. That was the one thing. He was injury prone and he's got injured. He doesn't look to be back till Christmas. So... We were playing kind of, we were playing Williams, our midfielder in defence, and that was it was just leading to goals pretty much every single game. Um, but overall, defensively, we have looked quite good. I know I'm saying this after we lost 4 1, but we have actually looked relatively solid defensively. We don't give up too many chances. It's more individual errors that are really costing us and trying to play out from the back. And uh, the second goal on um, on Saturday was the, the it was an individual error from Brazil, the goalkeeper. Um, but again, he hasn't made any sort of mistakes the whole season. He's, if you said there was a player to watch out for, it would be him. He's been absolutely superb. Like I haven't, I haven't known a goalkeeper to kind of dominate a game or, or not dominate, game, but change a team so much. Like, he plays as almost like a fifth defender. His distribution is like top tier. Um, and a lot of Pompey fans could see him going to the very top. And even after he made that mistake, it, was, it wasn't it was even a mistake. He kind of parried it down. It hit his foot and then bounced straight to Smith. And it was a very good finish from Smith in the end. But some of like some of the saves he made this season have really kept us in games. And, and a lot of Pompey fans feel that he will go to the very top. And even on, as I said, even on Saturday after the mistake, he made two or three very good stops afterwards. It just shows the mentality. But he'd be the player to watch out for, along with Joe Morrell in the middle. They've both been very good this season. Definitely. Um, Mizuno, I remember he was at Rochdale last year on loan. I know he got relegated at Rochdale, but he was a standout player for them during that, that terrible season for them. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we've been scoring goals ourselves. We're conceding goals. Um, what game can we expect then from a Pompey side? You sort of mentioned that earlier, but what, what do you reckon and, and your prediction as well? Well, yeah, I was, I was literally, as I, just before this, I was writing my preview for the game and I had, I just had a look at um, Ipswich on Y Scout and, you do. You look to well, obviously your top scorers in the league, but then you've also conceded the most in the league. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was both teams did get a goal um, in this one. But also Portsmouth, especially mainly away from home, we've really kind of struggled to score or create chances. Um, at home, I feel that it, it's which are a good fit for us to play. You know, this is what I'm going off. Of what I know Paul Cook teams to play like, but you like to keep the ball. You like to dominate possession. I looked at your possession stats. You've had nearly 60% of the ball in most games. If you're going to try and play out from the back, it's where Pompey are probably at our best. If if the pan, if, if the fans get behind us and and really push the team on, Pompey can press very aggressively with, with the likes of Romeo, the likes of Harness, Marquis is excellent at pressing. They could press your defenders into a mistake. That's what happened against Sunderland. And within 20 minutes, they were 3-0 down. So that that is our stronger point. But it's just when, if, if we get it right or not. If we don't get it right, we could be cut open. Um, but again, it, it, it all depends on whether we can kind of press the defenders into making mistakes. That that would be the one way I could see us getting at it, switch and getting an early goal. Because if we get an early goal, you guys are under a lot of pressure as well with, with, with what's your results. So I feel like the first goal in this one is going to be quite crucial. And um, we've been the one who's been scoring really early on as well. And um, I just want to quickly, as we end this this chat, um, you know, it's going to have that extra spice. Of course, you know, Checkbook FC was going on Twitter and all that sort of stuff. Do you think that's going to add the extra spice to this game just to, you know, have that atmosphere is going to be very tense and, you know, under the lights as well? Yeah, I, I do think it will be. But after the transfer window finished, there was that, the Portsmouth News reported that apparently Pompey were after Edmondson, Chaplin and Joe Piggott. So you obviously got all of them. 
And I feel like Danny Cowley is quite frustrated because he just didn't expect a side like Ipswich to be spending, obviously at the American takeover, but we've, we've got American own as well. And they've, you know, they've got a lot of money. We didn't expect your owners to spend as much as they did. And I think he was frustrated because these are players he wanted. Like Pompey have been after Edmondson for years now, since he was at Oldham. Um, so, yeah, I just don't think it was expected to the, the, the level of money that was being spent by sides like Ipswich and Wigan, which was quite frustrating. And if you'd got Joe Morrell, that would have just been the kind of the nail in the coffin. Uh, yeah, but it's it's just the league this year. There's been a lot of money spent and it's something that this Ports have had to kind of suck up and deal with and, and, and go along a slightly different route, um, looking at kind of younger players or free agents that haven't quite made it a bigger clubs which is what we have done so yeah that would be that would be the the route i'd go down there but yeah there will be a little bit of spice towards this game i think Definitely. and then the final sort of thing is um maybe getting some some advice for town fans going down to pompey fratton park on a tuesday night uh what can we expect if it, someone's going to their first ever game at fratton park you know what where is there any good away pubs anywhere to go before the game uh yeah so the you, if you're getting the train, um, it would be into Fratton, and then you walk past, there's the Rifle Club, which is the home pub. So that's for, that's mainly for Pompey fans. But if you keep going, keep walking towards the ground, if you keep going up, oh, I'm trying to think the road, there's a roundabout, you keep going up, and there's a pub on the right called the Shepherd's Crook. They're really friendly. It's got an outside bit. So they're, they're usually quite um, quite friendly for away fans as well. So that, that would be the pub I'd go to. But you, Pompey fans are all quite friendly at the moment. There's no real... Unless, unless it's Southampton, there's no real, uh, no nothing to worry about. But yeah, that that would be a good pub to go to. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that, I'm trying to think of anywhere else off the top of my head. There, there, there's also some in the ground. They've got some new like bars and stuff they've been doing up. I know they've been doing the away end up. So it's not going to be it's not going to be amazing, but it'll be it'll be a lot better than it has been in recent years. Definitely, and um, yeah, I'm sure town fans are looking forward to going to Pompey. Uh, Sam, it's been a pleasure for, well, it's been a pleasure of having you on. Um, anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up? Uh, I'll just give my prediction. Uh, I'm going to go for a two-one Pompey win with uh, Marcus Harness to get on the score sheet. That would be a, I think that'd be a sensible prediction for me. I've um, sadly done the same. I've gone for a two-one Pompey win. I'm, I'm betting against town, but sometimes <laughs> when you do that actually town win so it works but we'll, we'll wait and see but Sam it's been a pleasure thank you very much hopefully everyone's enjoyed watching let us know in the comments down below your thoughts going into this game your predictions your thoughts on what Sam has said and we'll see you at Pompey bye bye for now